Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. Paris Rapeseed. I said this over a month ago and repeated it ever since, including today, how it was sometimes a sheer joy to write commentaries here because of the beauty of the patterns that show themselves. Well, it continues to be so here. There are still two key patterns here. The first and larger one is the February 2021 to July 2022 ascending broadening wedge pattern. You can see a very small part of the lower trend line highlighted in blue, uh, dark blue in the top left of my daily chart. Now it's disappearing very, very rapidly. To be honest, it is a large pattern, but it has slowly exited my daily charts time range. This was not a perfect pattern, but it had been the main market driver high in the early part of 2022. The break lower in July last year left the following incredible targets on the downside, which I highlighted at the time. The primary target X is in the 352 even area with a harder to reach secondary target X1 in the 217 even area. These were, these are obviously, well, pretty much out there targets way out there that you can put into your diary on a back page and just look at maybe once a year. However, there was and still is a newer, smaller pattern, though it still looks quite big, quite big on this daily chart. It is the early July to late October 2022 bearish Andrews pitchfork. And this is where the joy comes in. The market has since October last year moved down within this bearish pitchfork, mainly as it is now in between the middle time below, currently 437.5, and the upper tine above, currently 507 and three quarters. You can clearly see the tines highlighted in purple on my daily chart. I thought back when I drew this one that it might eventually need finessing or even turning into a shallower bearish shift pitchfork, but both of which I would be happy to have done in the heartbeat, but so far it's not needed any surgery or finessing and is still excellent in showing the bearish angle of attack of this market. The only new feature was the dip and recovery in mid-March below the middle tine and the current pressure on the middle tine and the congestion between 438 and 446. Um, overhead we have now congestion between 460 and 469 and after this between 491 to 505 which had earlier capped the rise last week. Speaking of last week, I said back then that last week might turn out to be a possible weekly key reversal down. All this with a shortened week due to the Easter break. Well, in the end, the market opted for the lesser cousin to the weekly key reversal, and that's the outside week. So this week's bearish action so far has been helpful to this lesser pattern. Thus, below the congestion, we have below the congestion support between 438 and 446 and the middle time, we enter a fairly free area of supports. But if we look closely further down, we can see some old support from two necklines. They're very close together, generated from the November 2019 to the February 2020 move, uh, 398 and 400. These are also close to the December 2020 low at 396. This would be the next area of support below the middle time. Finally, there is again the elephant in the room, which threatened at one point to become a herd of elephants. It is a monthly key reversal down in November last year. And whatever you do, please make sure you take that into your calculations or your thoughts. Winnipeg Canola. This is another daily chart that had previously given me great joy, but things are changing here. If I take you back to late summer last year, I said at the time the following, and I quote, it became evident since the start of the sideways to slightly lower movement we've seen here since June that there was a shallow bear channel, and that's currently between 869.30 down to 755.60. And I continue, and it is this that had been driving the market lower during the summer, end of quote. Now, to emphasize this point, I further added, and I quote, so it seems that until that slightly bearish channel breaks or morphs into another pattern, it will continue to show the slightly bearish angle of attack of this market. And that's the end of the quote. Well, as you can see, the bear channel was still there, leading the way lower until mid-March. help you view it, I've highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart. Now, before I expand on this break lower, let me take you back to the start of this year and another feature that has impinged upon the market. It was the June 2020 to date broken uptrend, 
which I've still kept highlighted on my daily chart in bright red, currently at 8.44 even. I've deliberately said to date, thus perhaps implying it's still influencing the market despite it being clearly broken. The reason why will soon become evident. Okay, so the market sauntered down through this uptrend in early March, and for a while it looked like we might see the bear channel morph into a sideways triangle made up from the upper bear channel line and this broken uptrend. I personally have also embraced the idea of the sideways tri triangle. Indeed, I saw them, still see them, both working together with a break lower and with all the implications that has. Thus, for the sideways triangle, we had a primary target in the 768.5 area, and the secondary harder to reach target X1 down in the 688 and a half area, a 688 even area. Five weeks ago, the market dropped down and reached the primary target and the move lower looked good at the time to try down to target X1 with seemingly little in the way apart from the July 2008 high at 71080. However, a little after piercing this 71080 support, the market started showing indecisive actions, culminating in an outside day in late March with bullish tendencies, if only just as it was also a bullish double. After this, prices recovered higher, but only as far as the lower bear channel line, currently at 755.60, where the market found it hard to regain the pattern, the original bear channel, that it once was. It also means that I choose not to retract some of the potential targets below for the bear channel pattern. Thus, the primary target for this move lower out of the bear channel was already reached in the 726 zone. A secondary hard to reach tar target X2 is still live lower down, below the bottom of my daily chart in the 644 and a half zone. Now, one final point, and it's something I've raised now some 14 weeks ago and on every occasion since, and I quote, There is just the thought of what may be the whole April today action. It can be seen as a bottoming action. You see, it can also be seen just as it is a shallow bear channel, or you might look at it as part of a very large bearish halfway hesitation. It is all still too early on these thoughts, but I think they need to be present when things start to happen, eventually. Well, that's the end of that quote. We are again further along and thus closer than ever now to looking at this action as a possible very large bearish halfway hesitation. But we are not there yet. Just keep watching this space. Bursa Malaysia Crude Palm Oil Back over September and mid-October last year, the market formed a small but effective reverse head and shoulders pattern. It was the break higher over the neckline for this pattern, combined with the break higher over the old neckline of the September 2015 to November 2017 head and shoulder spot, uh, top, currently at 39.72, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. And finally, the break above the short medium moving average, currently at 4,000, that altogether caused the move up in early November. It gave potential targets on the upside of a primary target in the 42.45 area and a secondary hard to reach target X1 in the 44.40 area. In late October, prices reached the primary target and have come close to reaching target X1 as recently as early March, but we've not managed to reach it, not just yet. Now, I have thought about retiring target X1 more than once, but I'm also cautious which is why I've still kept it on as a potential target above. And I will again, if perhaps only for a little while longer. You see, every time we've seen an attempt higher, we've also seen the market drop back, back to the seeming security of the combination of the old neckline, short medium moving average, and the medium moving average, which is currently at 39.80. Much as we've seen it these past two weeks. Taking a step back for a moment, we also still have live the mid-August, early November 2022, mildly bearish shift picture, which is highlighted in bright green on my daily chart. The market is at the moment, once again, in between the upper time above, currently at 42.21, and the middle time below, currently 35.84. We're also, again, pretty much within spitting distance of all the moving averages, something that hasn't happened for a long time. It is worth noting that back in early March, the declining long moving average, currently 39.81, helped push prices lower. I was ready to see if it was, might do so again last week and this, but it hasn't. There's one further feature I'd like to discuss. I previously pointed out how we might have a monthly key reversal for March, and we ended up with a lesser outside month. Well, the opportunity for another possible key reversal, this time a weekly key reversal, is available for this week. If we have a close tomorrow, either above 39.55 or under 39.08, 
then we'd be on. Anything in between would have a lesser outside week. Right now, well, we are looking at a lesser outside week here. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.